Banana growers in Tanzania face a number of serious challenges. Probably the most uh, important of these challenges are those that are posed by Fusarium, Black Sigatoka, a number of nematodes, and weevil virus issues. Uh, these, these problems can reduce the yields of these bananas by almost 90 percent, and therefore they're a serious threat to, to food security in the region. Despite the importance of these, these bananas that, that are growing here, the Machadi bananas, are the same bananas that uh, Tanzanians' ancestors were growing even before the Europeans got here. These bananas have never been improved, so they're essentially uh, land races, we would call them in breeding. Um, there hasn't been an improved Machadi. The aim of this project is to improve the production and productivity of bananas by developing and delivering the new hybrid varieties that are expected to be 30% uh, providing high yields compared to the currently grown bananas. In this project, we have several partners involved in this project. It is important to have partners all over the world because every partner bring its unique ideas in the project. Banana is a, is a type of plant that uh, their fruits are made without seeds. So in order to get seeds, we need to, to do a hand pollination. The hand pollination starts with um, identifying the parents first, then you come and pollinate the, the hands. These are the female flowers you see. The flowers opens one hand each day. So when it opens like this, it continues to open up to two or three weeks. After having the bunches open every day, you go and collect your male parents from Asian diploids for, to come and pollinate it. We take our pollen from male plant which have Asian banana diploids. Now, this is our pollen. We pollinate by pressing the pollen. After there, we cover our female plant by using this cotton bag to prevent them from outside pollinator. After, after pollination, we wait for, for two to three months when, when the, the first hand of the bunch starts to be yellowing. After that, that is the indication that, that our, our bunch has reached the mature, maturity. So we harvest the bunch and bring it to the ripening shed. It's a controlled area where we put it to, to have a completely ripening. After the fruit has ripened, we, we come and uh, look for seeds, we doing the seed extraction. And uh, it is simple now here, we do just do with hands, we just pulp with it like this, looking for the seeds. Like uh, this one here, here we don't have any seeds. And uh, usually, we, we, on average, we get like uh, two to three seed on, on, a, on a bunch. Our highest record with the, with the, with the Mchari, we, we have gone up to 46 seeds per, 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 per bunch, when we, if it's successful. So this shows the frustration of doing this. You can spend weeks doing the pollination on this. You can check through all of these hands on the banana, and you may not find any seeds. Now, if you find four five seeds, seven seeds you get excited it's, it's a chance for celebration but on average as, as Hassan mentioned you get maybe two seeds per per bunch on average these are the banana seeds from the fields when they come in the lab 
we sort them for good and bad seeds. After we sort them, we do surface sterilization to make sure they are clean. After the surface sterilization, we remove the hard cover to get a small thing called the embryo. After we get the embryo, we plant them to the special medium to encourage them to, the embryo to germinate. Then we take the embryo, we incubate in the dark for the maximum of two months. But from one week, we will start seeing if there is any germination. When they germinate, we transfer again to the special media, which is called the proliferation media, where we will allow our uh, seedlings to multiply. So we will continue to multiply them until we get the enough number that will be needed the field people. When we get enough number, we transfer them again to the rooting media to allow our seedlings to give roots and they will stay in the growth room for one month before we send them to the scrum house, then to the field. Here we receive plants from lab and when they come here, we transplant them to this small pot. And here we use the coconut peat fiber to initiate growth. They stay here up to three to four weeks and we cover them with this glass. After here, we transplant them to the big pot and here we use soil to help the plant to adapt the field condition. In this greenhouse, this is the place where we are conducting the experiment for evaluation of, of different genotypes. Currently, we are working with the uh, mapping population, which was derived from a cross between Bolneo, which is a, which is a wild resistant banana, and the Pariyama, which we know currently that it's a susceptible one. So from, from that cross, we have uh, a progeny which we are trying to evaluate and later on, we can come up with, uh, with markers which can be used in, in breeding program. The plant pathology, without it, plants which are produced from the tissue culture produced by breeders, if they are released without being challenged by these people, cannot be at all something that farmers can be sure of. The breeders will reproduce, and I say this is a nice plant with these qualities then we have to test it and see if it is okay. If it is resistant, then we, we, we give him information that this is the resistant. Then the breeder will continue doing what? Improving the other qualities, maintaining the resistant qualities. Once such a variety is released into the field, then it will be of use to the farmers. So now we have this uh, banana breeding tool, which is a tracking system for banana. We make crosses, but using this uh, tracking system where you generate the barcodes for the new hybrids that we are going to produce. Actually, it starts with the bunch that you are going to get after doing the pollination. So you know the crosses you are going to make in the particular day you get to the field you scan the female parent after scanning the female parent you know what the parent the name and id and everything and then you go you scan the male parent that you'll use to make that particular cross after scanning that making that cross the system will generate the new barcode which is the combination of the two ids from the male parent and female parent and that id is where is the id that will be used to track that cross made on that particular day so that generated barcode it help us to follow to track that cross from the day it was made until the day we get new plantlets and then they go back to the field. In the Breeding Better Banana project, we are mainly concerned with hand use evaluation in different five 
agroecological zones of Tanzania and Uganda. Currently, uh, IATA, they are currently breeding mchare to find out the variety which is highly resistant to fusarium wilt. And now we are seeing that the coming of this breeding project, it is a good opportunity to come out with those resistant varieties that uh, can sustain the impact, adverse impact of fusarium wilt. Also in this project, uh, we have the capacity building component where we have students who are directly funded by the project. But also we have several students in other countries where the project is being implemented. This has been a very, very good and successful collaboration. And they've been uh, our, our very, very good partners because they've been able to give us expertise and the facilities for training our students. Our students have been uh, using their laboratories for, for their research. And uh, this is very key for, for Tanzania and actually for Northern Tanzania particularly because this area is a banana eating area. And particularly the mshale, there is a banana type which is called mshale which is popular around this area. And the IITA research is focused on Mshale. So we expect the, the results that will come from this research will increase the value of, of bananas now as a cash crop, not only as a, as a food crop. And uh, it will increase the economy of the people around here. There really is no other breeding program in the world that's focusing on these machadi bananas. Um, the Tanzanians that you will see here are involved in the only active breeding program for these bananas. So if we're not doing this, it's not going to get done. Okay. Sure. Sure. Sure.